Howdy folks, this is a video from GWizard University uh, that's to show you how to use uh, GWizard Calculator to find feeds and speeds for your CNC routers. The video assumes you've already watched the feeds and speeds for milling machines because uh, we're going to kind of build on the basics that we covered in that video for this video and keep this one a little bit shorter and, and, and avoid the repetition. So first thing is, a CNC router is basically a milling machine. There are some differences uh, in how they uh, operate and uh, the types of tooling they can use and, and some of the problems you're going to encounter with one versus a milling machine, but by and large they're milling machines. Uh, you can stick a lot of different milling machine tooling in a CNC router and uh, so that's why there's so much overlap between these two. So let's start out by switching over to a uh, uh, CNC router machine profile. We have a generic one programmed up. And I want to point out a couple of things right away because we just came from the profile we had set up uh, for a generic milling machine. And so we're still sitting on aluminum here. We've got a high-speed steel end mill. And a whole bunch of different things have lit up in red. Now, as you recall from the other video, Red is something you typically want to avoid, and it's complaining about a couple of different things uh, that all have to do with the RPM here. And what we can see is that on a typical router, the, the high end of the RPM is much higher, and also the low end of the RPM is much higher. Let's go back just real quick for comparison. So we had 24,000 and 12,000, and on a typical VMC, you can get almost all the way down to zero, maybe it's 100 RPM, whatever, uh, but you're limited to 7,500 RPM. So that's a big difference uh, to take into account right away because you're going to be able to create cutting combinations that are you know, basically impossible because you can't make the machine go slowly enough. So for example, aluminum. Uh, it's a soft metal, but it's a metal nonetheless, and it's got to be cut a lot more slowly than, uh, say, wood or plastics. So what do we do about that? Well, there's a couple of things we can do. First thing is, most of the time you're going to want to use some kind of a carbide uh, tool uh, in a router. When you're going that fast, carbide is a lot capable of handling a lot more speed because it's it can take a lot higher temperatures. Uh, and so uh, that helped a little bit, uh, but we're still not out of the woods. We, we're still going uh, way too fast for our cutter. So then your next step would be reduce the tool diameter. Okay, This is a half inch tool, which is pretty large for a lot of routers. Uh, so let's say we were to cut it back to a, a quarter inch. Okay, now we're in the ballpark. We're running fast enough RPM wise that we can get the job done. And that's a pretty typical uh, thing for you to look at doing um, in order to get your router uh, into the sweet spot where the feeds and speeds need to be. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that uh, uh, sweet spot. Um, I've got a bunch of different uh, router articles here teed up that I want to talk to you about. Uh, but here's a way to think about the sweet spot. Uh, of feeds and speeds. And along the bottom here we have spindle RPM, faster versus slower, and on the left is a feed rate, slower versus faster. So yeah, if everything's maxed out, this is great uh, for material removal rate, but if we start to go too fast, what happens is you're burning up the tool. It's getting too hot. Um, so you want to stay back in this zone here, a little bit slower, and maximum feed rate together with maximum RPM that the tool will tolerate gives you the best material removal rates. That's for your roughing. If you slow down the feed rate a little bit, uh, that gets you the best surface finish. And the way we go about uh, slowing down our feed rate is with this whole tortoise hair slider here. So I can come back, let's see, we were at 104 inches a minute, and I can get back into finishing category. You can see we're now 45 inches a minute and the sort of super finishing category 19 inches a minute. So that's just showing you how that whole uh, uh, sweet spot works. If you get going too slow, it's just like we talked about in the milling video, you're going to start rubbing the tool 
it's unable to take chips that fine. They just kind of skate along on top of the material and uh, that heats up the tool and again it'll burn up your tool. Um, we won't worry too much about slower RPMs for routers because routers have fast RPMs. Um, it's some of the milling machines where you have to consider what happens if you're going too slow. So those are some basics uh, for a router user. I'm going to talk some more about some of these uh, back and forths on RPM limits. But before I do that, I want to point out, uh, in addition, we have some router-specific uh, cutter options here, a down cut, a compression, and a straight flute. And so you just select an end mill, and then you pick one of these, for example, a straight flute cutter. And that gives you that different uh, cutting geometry. So let's look for a minute. We've got an article over here, and I'll, I'll I'll go back through the other articles so you can see what they are. There's an article that's that covers these different cutter types, CNC router cutter types, and how to use them on our blog. And you know, probably the easiest way to find this article is just come over here and type, you know, CNC router cutter types, and it'll bring you right to it. Basically, let's go through what we've got here for the router cutters. An upcut router bit is basically just a conventional end mill and the spiral, the helix on the flutes, pulls your chips up on an upcut, hence it's called an upcut. A downcut, they reverse the spiral and it pushes chips down. Now, uh, there's good and bad about pushing the chips down. The good is this sort of a cutter is less likely to chip your material up because it's pushing down it constantly. And the bad news is pushing the chips down into the workpiece, they don't have any place to go, so it's harder to clear the path. And so G-Wizard will adjust these to run a little more slowly, and you'll want to take care, whether you're using a vacuum system or an air blast or whatever, to make sure you're blowing all of that dust out of there when you use a down cut uh, so that it doesn't really start to clog things up. Um, another interesting type of cutter uh, made for routers is a compression cutter this one pulls the chips to the middle and as you can imagine it's designed to work on plywood uh, composite materials and laminates where you're worried about not wanting to chip either the top or the bottom and you're kinda going through the middle of a thin sheet of, of something uh, this is a good, good cutter to try to do that um, last but not least we've got straight flute cutters they have no no helix, no spiral, the flutes are just straight. Uh, they can't run nearly as quickly as uh, cutters with flutes, but they're very cheap, and so that's an advantage for that type of a cutter. So check out the article here, CNC router cutter types and how to use them uh, if you need some information on that type of thing. Um, second article I want to call your attention to is our 10 tips for CNC router aluminum cutting success. It is so popular we just we just put it over here on our uh, our featured article list uh, right here on the left so you can get right to it and it walks you through uh, different things you want to look at if you want to be successful cutting aluminum uh, with a CNC router and it so it talks about some of the aspects of your feeds and speeds calculator uh, types of cutters to use, the idea of going to smaller diameter cutters, really be careful to keep the chips clear. You need an air blast or something, vacuum, uh, to, to get those chips out of there because they want to weld themselves uh, onto the edge of the cutter and if they succeed in doing that you're going to break the cutter pretty quickly because it, it, it just it can't cut through all those chips welded on. Uh, likewise, your, your cutting depths uh, particularly if you're doing a full slot, meaning you're cutting with the full width of the cutter, can make it harder to get the chips out. So maybe do a little bit more shallow cuts in this case. Uh, if you go shallow enough, you may even be able to get by uh, without any kind of lubrication at all, which brings me to this lubrication step. Uh, people use mist, and uh, not very often on a router will they use flood coolant, because they're trying to lubricate the cutter. It's kind of a little bit of a misnomer. They call it coolant uh, because in an application like this, mostly what you're trying to do is prevent those chips from sticking to the edge of your cutter and just a little bit of lubricant 
really helps that. But as I say, if you go shallow enough and take it easy, uh, you can get by without the lubrication. Um, don't go too slow. You'll start rubbing. That's really easy to do on routers because the feed rates are higher because the RPMs are higher. Um, so, so deal with that. Uh, if you cannot feed fast enough, this is another problem you might encounter. Uh, let's say that you're uh, being asked to uh, feed at 104 and your machine's uh, maximum feed rate is 50. You know, probably you can go 104, but let's say it's, it's 50. Well, that's, that's really going to hold this down uh, uh, more than you'd like here. Uh, and, and so, you know, maybe what you'd like to do instead is use fewer flutes. Uh, on your cutter, like a single flute. They make single flutes for high-speed spindles and routers uh, that work great for slowing down the feed rate. Uh, and so that's a handy thing to know about uh, and be able to use. Um, last one is you can use horsepower limits to derate the cutting for rigidity. So uh, CNC routers tend to be much larger work envelope machines uh, than CNC milling machines. And uh, that means they're often less rigid because they're having to uh, uh, spread the beef of the machine that makes it rigid over a larger area. Uh, in your machine profile you have the ability to adjust for that. Uh, you tell us for example the X, Y, and Z travels uh, and the machine weight and if you go over here to the spindle horsepower and, and click weight adjusted horsepower, it will adjust by reducing the horsepower that you use uh, until you have the rigidity uh, that's more comparable to a vertical machining center. Uh, and that can also be a handy thing to do for uh, work that involves machining aluminum. Uh, not always required. You have to look at your individual application to see if you can get by without it, but it's a, it's a handy thing to know uh, that's available there for you. Okay, uh, those are some basics of how to use GWizard Calculator to generate feeds and speeds for CNC routers. Thanks very much.